One of the saddest cultural developments, in my view, as a previous big fan of Disney who used to watch it on a Sunday evening as a child and then watched it with my children as they grew up, we even visited Disneyland eight years ago, is that it's been captured by a small radical LGBTQQIP2SA plus movement and is doing all it can to indoctrinate children as young as possible in this sexualized and gender confused agenda. Yep, apparently Disney now thinks that the main thing your kids need to know everything about is their sexuality and their gender identity and figure out which category they're in. And of course, there's literally hundreds to choose from. But they're not the only children's program to be wary of. Let's check it out. So three years ago, Disney launched its new Pride Apparel and Accessory Collection targeted once again at our children. And among the Pride products being targeted to children included t-shirts, collectible pins, let me show you here, uh, t-shirts, collectible pins, backpacks, tumblers, mugs and towels, all emblazoned in rainbow colours and words affirming LGBT agenda. There's a pin kids can wear of Mickey's ears to celebrate transgender, bisexual, lesbian, even an intersectionality one to show just how woke you are. And now some of the classics are being pulled off their platform. You, you may be surprised by what movies are receiving warning labels. Uh, they're probably not the ones that you think should be. At the same time, Disney has thrown their beloved films under the bus, pulling classic films like Dumbo, Peter Pan, The Aristocats, and Swiss Family Robinson so that children could not view them from their accounts and labeling them as offensive. Tinkerbell and Captain Hook, even the Muppets, were called potentially problematic by Disney as they slapped warning labels on scores of classic films and TV shows. Well, another cultural icon taking fire. This time it's the one and only Muppet Show. The Disney Plus streaming service has begun offering the series and is including a disclaimer warning of, quote, offensive content. It's okay, uh, and then last year there was a TikTok clip, clip of a man in a dress welcoming small children into the Bibbidi Bobbidi boutique full of princess costumes. Uh, and this video went viral on social media uh, and you'll see a man with a moustache wearing a gown waving enthusiastically to children. <laughs> I'm here to shop you around and make all your selections for the day. Mm, yeah. Now, um, a commentator said Disney keeps doubling down because it would rather engage in political activism than return value to the shareholders. In fact, Disney Parks updated its uniform policy two years ago to allow employees, or as they're referred to in the park, cast members, to wear gendered clothing of their preference regardless of their biological sex. This way, cast members that might not identify as female can still be part of the process to dress up and style the children without having to refer to themselves as a female Disney character. Now, the irony, of course, is that Disney is, is obsessed with LGBT rights in the US, but not basic human rights in China because there's a massive Chinese market there and Disney wants to be part of that, despite... Uh, the human rights issues. Now, eight months ago, Disney's CEO, Bob Iger, who uh, replaced the man who replaced him when he retired, so he came out of retirement, he pledged to make Disney less woke. But the new Disney uh, Star Wars brand, the Acolyte, or series, has been promoted as the gayest Star Wars show yet. Take a look at this uh, recent interview featuring Leslie Headland, who is the creator of the new Disney Star Wars show, The Acolyte. She's the one on the right. I want to ask you both because this is, I would say, arguably the gayest Star Wars, I think, by a considerable <laughs> margin. And uh, are you excited no, about that? Are you not bracing the gayest yourself? Star Wars. Not the <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty gay, let's be honest. <laughs> Leslie, are you 
How do you feel? Am I gay? You, yes. Well, no, I know yes. you are gay, but I'm asking, are you excited about putting this, you know, this is going to be a talking point. Nerds, is it going to be a talking point? I'm sure so. Because nerds ins- are gay. Well, yeah. not, well, some nerds are very not gay and are very threatened by gay Well, stuff. that's true. But yeah. in my world, nerds are gay. Okay. <laughs> was, this, was this a fun element of... Is no, <laughs> I don't think so. And yet people have told me that it's the gayest Star Wars, and I frankly... You're offended? Into it. No. <laughs> I think that Star Wars is so gay already. Okay. <laughs> I mean, have you seen it's the fits? <laughs> We'd be like, look how gay this is, and then send each other a reference photo. And are you telling me, with a straight face, that C-3PO is straight? They're a couple. <laughs> That's what I think. But <laughs> this is more outward. I think it's canon that R2-D2 is, is a lesbian. Okay, that was enough of that. That was painful. But, you know, apparently the old Star Wars characters were gay. Uh, and this new Star Wars show will be the gayest one yet. I mean, who knew R2-D2 was trans? Now, according to a report in the Christian Post, uh, in an X post last year, the Star Wars fan account, The Direct, announced that the Acolyte had cast Abigail Tom as Ensign Eurus, making her the first transgender actor to appear in a Star Wars series. Uh, and the Acolyte showrunner, Leslie Headland, previously, that was a lady on the right that we just saw in that interview, previously told the New York Times that she doesn't believe people who oppose leftist activism are true fans of Star Wars. So if you oppose leftist activism, you're not a true fan. She said, as a fan myself, I know how frustrating some Star Wars storytelling in the past has been. I've felt it myself. Anyone who engages in bigotry, racism, or hate speech, I don't consider a fan. Hmm. So uh, if you like or liked Star Wars, but you're a social conservative, you ain't a Star Wars fan. I mean, that's a little bit like President Biden. Remember that time he said, if you're black and you don't vote for him, you ain't black. Now, earlier this year, the creator, Leslie Headland, the lady on the right, openly admitted to the goal behind the show in an interview that surfaced on X, formerly Twitter. And it involves the movie Frozen. Yeah, you'll be shocked by the narrative here. Have a watch. Frozen, as a a grown-ass woman, I I cried through the entire movie. Uh, There was just something about... The relationship between the sisters, the the like de villainization of uh, the classic kind of fairy tale bad bad guy, you know, um, uh, the concept of true love being between two sisters and not a heterosexual relationship, like it just mm-hmm. it just destroyed me completely, and I thought. Gosh, you know, I would love to make something like this that is, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, Disney, meaning it's something that, like, my parents would have allowed me to see when I was younger as a queer person. Gotcha. But I would have been able to understand as a queer person, and I think I, I would have had a completely different life. And so I really was inspired by it and was like, God, I would love to make a story like this. Um, mm, and so- yeah. The concept of true love being between two sisters and not a heterosexual relationship. It just destroyed me completely, she says. To make something my parents would have allowed me to see when I was younger as a queer person that I would have been able to understand uh, a queer person. Now, according to some commentators, Joel Berry, who is the author of the book Postmodern Pilgrim's Progress, he said the Acolyte is a queer Marxist vandalization of the myth of Star Wars. In the Acolyte, the Force is a metaphor for cultural hegemonic power The Jedi are a metaphor for cisgender white oppressors who hoard the power for themselves. Yes, it really is that obnoxious and stupid. Uh, And another account said, The Acolyte Star Wars new series streaming is very woke. Main character has two mums. Main Jedi characters are all black and Asian, no white men. And in the first episode, the only speaking role for a white character was for prisoners. In episode three, they plan to throw away all Star Wars canon and also start using pronouns. One reviewer who has seen the episode said it will destroy all remaining affection the fans had for Star Wars. Well, that remains to be seen. I mean, this could be all hot air spin. But based on what has been seen and what the producer says, would you be surprised? 
Uh, interestingly, in the rise of Skywalker, there was a same-sex couple seen having a celebratory kiss for a moment. However, this scene was edited out of the film's release in countries that are opposed to homosexuality. Now, more recently, there's another one, Tales of the Empire. This one is apparently geared towards kids, and some critics argue it features a non-binary Jedi, based on how all of the characters use they-them pronouns to refer to his corpse. Have, have a watch. So tired. I feel so alone. Then come with me. It's finished. They're still alive. We need to get them to the ship. We can save them. Forget it. Let them die. Him. It's not worth the trouble. They were about to surrender. Irrelevant. The Jedi are a threat to be eradicated wherever they are found. Uh, he was about to surrender, but anyway, one more. The long-awaited sequel to Disney and Pixar's Inside Out uh, is coming out in a couple of months, I think it is, but the official trailer... Uh, has been released, and it's looking a little gay. Now, it's not me saying that. It's Yahoo News UK. Yes, they believe the trailer might suggest a little crush, a little queer crush, with the coloured hair. Now, who knows, but would it surprise you? I mean, it maybe people looking for a fence where there is none but there seems to be a trend here and as we know it's been admitted uh, by that expose of a disney planning meeting uh, two years ago where the producers of the programs the creators made it quite clear what their agenda was here's one of those short clips and some that i felt like that sense of i don't have to be afraid to like Let's have these two characters kiss. Let's in the background. This like I was just wherever I could, just basically adding queerness to like. The, if you see anything queer in the show, I'm proud of them. But like I, I just was like, no one would stop me. Yeah. Okay. Now uh, there has been a fallout last year. Uh, last year, Disney streaming service Disney Plus reported a loss of more than four million subscribers. This shows one million, but that's just for a quarter. More than 4 million subscribers. Now look, it's still 153 million subscribers. So you could call that a drop in the bucket. But as they say, go woke, go broke. And that's what seems to be happening to Disney. Disney was among the worst performers in the Dow Jones Industrial Average in 2022. Breaking news tonight, a massive shakeup at Disney. The stunning development in the business world overnight. Bob Iger is back at the top of Disney, just two years after retiring from a legendary run, he replaces his own successor, Bob Chapek, after the company suffered a disappointing earnings last quarter, and that's not it. As Disney shares were in a nosedive, the Disney board suddenly replaced the company's CEO. At an employee town hall meeting, new CEO Bob Iger seemed to choose his words carefully when it came to what some referred to as the company's get woke, go broke agenda. When you tell stories, it's a delicate balance. You're talking to an audience, but it's also important to listen to an audience. It's important to have respect for the people that you're serving, that you're trying to reach, and not have disdain for it. That said, we're not going to make everybody happy all the time, and we're not going to try to. Disney's new CEO seemed to admit the happiest place on earth was no longer willing to make everybody, well, happy. They stopped going to these big franchise movies and stop buying uh, the toys and they stop going to Disney World. And so you see, it's the, the old adage of get woke, go broke. Well mm. Yeah, and there's some great comments there about our purchasing power. And when we choose what we purchase, we can have an influence on warning companies about going woke. Uh, a little bit like our new website, wokeup.nz. So many conservatives uh, boycotted Disney 
and it showed. But it's not just Disney. It's programs generally aimed at children, including even Sesame Street, celebrating gender diversity and sexuality for very young children. The bottom line, sadly, uh, parents need to treat Disney and other children programs as potentially hostile. Parents, check them first. Don't hope for the best. There are some wonderful resources which still, for example, have the legacy of Walt Disney in them. Wonderful movies and characters. But for the more modern material, don't be so confident. Sadly. Sadly.